Well, good morning, everybody. I hope and pray that you've all had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Wherever you spent it, maybe at the beach or with your family, wherever you were. Hey, I want to say I hope and pray that you had a wonderful time. Hope and pray you ate plenty of food. Now we've got to lose the kilos. Hey, but hey, what's new? But enough to say uh, also hope you got what you wanted for Christmas and uh, enjoyed it, enjoyed your family, friends and so forth. So wherever you're watching this today, maybe you're watching online also or in the campuses, I want to bring you greetings. I want to pray that you have a wonderful new year coming up. But wasn't it great, those Christmas services that we had, just so good. Even though we didn't do the big Christmas spectacular, it was just awesome to be able to do those carol services. And so thank you to all those who've worked so hard, Josh and the team, everybody else who did an amazing job to bring those to us. I want to say thank you so much. And uh, so God's good. Amen. You know, just prior to Christmas, I was giving a message about courage, about Joshua, where God came to Joshua and said, hey, would you be uh, very courageous? We need to be courageous because as we know, as the Scripture says, we have not passed this way before. 2021, uh, let's be honest, 2020 was an unknown year. We didn't know it when we started, but what a year it's been and what is going to come in 2021, we don't know. But, you know, we need to be bold and very courageous. We need to be people of faith, right? And so we we looked at that about what puts fear in the enemy camp. We went over and it's a great message. I'd love you to uh, check it out. If you, you haven't seen it, spend some time over holidays feeding yourself some good stuff instead of all the pavlova. Um, pavlova is okay, but everything in moderation, right? So, but you can't overdose on the Word of God. Hallelujah. So the thing is, is that I want to encourage you to uh, look at that message on courage. But I want to take us back uh, to Moses about to enter the promised land. So this was 40 years prior to my last message in relation to Joshua and being courageous and, and full of courage and so forth. So let's check out Numbers chapter 13, 17. I want to bring greetings to the South Island, out the west and east here in Auckland, Mount Wellington, North Shore. Hey, God bless you. It's just great to be with you today. Numbers 13, uh, verse 17. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way to the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like where the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many. Where the land they dwell in is good or bad, where they, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, where the land is rich and poor, it's a little bit like next year, right? What's it gonna be like? And whether there are forests there or not. And again, here it is, be of good courage, right? I want you to be of good courage heading into the new year and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes, the first ripe grapes. You might see my plate of grapes sitting here today. Then they came to the valley of Ishkal and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. So these grapes are a little smaller than what this land flowing with milk and honey produced. Um, they also bought some of the pomegranates and figs and they returned from spying out of the land after 40 days, 40 days. Notice they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. Here they'd spied out the land for 40 days. They departed and came back to Moses, 12 of them, Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation, children of Israel in the wilderness. And it says they brought back word to them and to all the congregation, showed them the fruit. They showed them the fruit. They showed them the fruit. Check it out. They showed them that it was good fruit, right? And they told them, we went to the land where you sent us as truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. You know, there's some things that are unknown next year and there could be some giants to slay, but hey, praise God, we're full of courage, amen. And we need to understand this principle here. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jezebites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb, Praise God for Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Caleb, hallelujah. Um, he was 80 years of age when he did get to enter the promised land. He was 40 years of age here. Then Caleb quieted in the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. Overcome it. Hallelujah. We, oh, overcome it. And, but the men who had gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land. As a Christian, we should never give a bad report that things are too much, too hard. Uh, you know, I'm scared about COVID. I'm scared about this. We shouldn't be spreading a bad report. We should be spreading a great report. Amen. We overcome, praise God, through the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. The land which they... 
which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, all the people whom we saw, it, a men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Achan came from the giants. And it says here that we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Father, I pray your blessing over this word today. I pray, oh God, that you would inspire every person under the sound of my voice, that you would encourage them. Let them be full of courage. Let them be full of faith. Father, full of peace, oh God. Lord, the kingdom of God. Lord, we believe for overcomers. And we pray, Lord, your blessing and anointing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So these grapes, these grapes, huge cluster, two men to carry them. Talk about the abundance, the abundance. Who knows that God wants to feed you on the finest of the week? No two ways about it. We've got to believe the promise of God. I mean, you know, I think about this, that, you know, He doesn't just want us to live off the gleanings of the field. He wants us to have the whole field. Amen. It's like, you know, the little boy with the five sandwiches and the couple of fish. He fed 5,000 with that. And uh, in the story, not only grapes, but you had them saying that we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we became like grasshoppers in their sight. But I want you to say this uh, saying with me today, grasshoppers do not eat grapes. Grasshoppers do not eat grapes. Grasshoppers, would you say it? Grasshoppers do not eat grapes. You know something? You know something? The more we need to look at the Word of God and the less we need to look at the world. We need to look less and less at the world and more and more to the Bible. Thy Word, the Bible says, even the Bible, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the Bible is a road mark, hallelujah, for excellence. The road, the Bible is a road map for the future, for 2021. The Bible is, hallelujah. And we need to look less and less, not only at the world, but we need to look less and less at ourselves and more unto Jesus. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And so we got a commander in chief. I talked about being in the Lord's army a couple of weeks ago. We got a commander in chief who shows us the way. And I love the Bible. I love the Old Testament as well. And the writers, how they share their lifestyles. And, and you read the book and you see how God uses ordinary people, people with flaws, People with hang-ups, people just like you and me, hallelujah. And amazingly, God knows all about us and yet He still uses us. Think about that. God knows your weaknesses. He knows your strengths. He knows your giftings, hallelujah. He knows every doubt you have. He knows every thought you have. But God will use you in 2021, in spite of this past year. I believe there's a shift coming. There's obviously a shift coming to the world. No two ways about it. I'm not talking necessarily about the great global reset, but, but the thing is, there's a shift coming in 2021. The world is changing. We know global, the world is changing. And the church, we need to change as well, amen. But around the world, never has a church had so many resources. Never has a church been larger and more effective globally, reaching out to people online through technology. I mean, the, the opportunities we have before us, 12, starting a new campus in Tarang. And so for 12 leaders, spies, witnesses going into the promised land. It's like, can I just put it this way? These 12 men, it's like they go and see a commercial. You know what a commercial is or a trailer to a movie. I remember a movie producer telling me, you know, Peter, it's not so much about the movie, it's about the trailer. Make a great trailer, right? And, and it's like they, these 12 men, they're a witness, a witness. You know, I think about King David. He was anointed a couple of times before he became king. It's like he had a taste, They're like a, a starter before a meal, you know, an appetizer. You can't say an appetizer in America because they call the appetizer the main meal, but an appetizer in New Zealand uh, before the main meal. And then David, he had a taste of kingship but in being anointed, but then he went back to the sheep because it wasn't his time yet. And God gives us a taste. He's given me a taste over the years of different things and a glimpse of something that could happen in the future, of a fulfilment that He wants to bring me into. God shows you something and gives you a glimpse and He gives you a taste. Have you had a taste? Have taste and see that the Lord is good, like honey in a rock, and you get a taste in God. And why do you get a taste? Why does He give you a glimpse? It's because so that you can endure in the day of hardship, right? So you will not faint in the day of adversity. Uh, so you will not back down or slow down, be, not be like those of Ephraim who turned back in the day of battle. You know, so that so He gives you a taste so that you'll press in and possess all that He's got for you. Because, you know, when you know something's about to happen, 
Nothing is happening to us right now that can stop us from possessing what we've seen and what we've read. Have you read the end of the book, my friend? Have you read the end of the book? We go up, hallelujah. And without a progressive vision, you're gonna dwell very carelessly. And so the ability or being able to see, to know whose side you're on, because you know you may not be able to, if you don't see and you don't understand whose side you're on, you won't be able to deal with the now. If you haven't had a taste, if you don't know what's coming your way. You know, let's be honest, the most common healing that Jesus performed was a healing of a blind person. Why? Because He wants you to see where you are going. Grapes, clusters of grapes, pomegranates, a land flowing with milk and honey. My Bible tells me, eye has not seen nor ear has not heard the things that God has in store for them, but He has revealed them through His Spirit. You know, it's true. God can make up the years that the locust has eaten. Have you just heard what I said? God can make up the years that the locust has, has eaten. And at times, you don't even have to work for it. God just does it. You just have to step into it. It's amazing. Amazing how the devil always wants to kill you in the wilderness. You've got to remember, of course, you know, in the wilderness, that's where Jesus was when the devil tried to attack him, that dry and barren place. When you're hungry, when you're down, when you're at your low point, here's the original kick them while they're down kind of people. And here's Jesus in the wilderness and the devil comes and tries to tempt him and attack him. And, and he does that with us when we're at a low point, when we're going through some valley. The devil comes to us and says, you're no good, you can't do it. God doesn't love you. He tries to whisper all those negatives. But friend, you've got to make up your mind today that you ain't no grasshopper, right? Grapes and pomegranates. And it's been a while in this story, it's been a while since the children of Israel had tasted of such things. They had been living on leeks and onions. Now I have to confess, I like fried onions. I eat onions are good for your bones, good for my knees, right? So I fry onions on the barbecue every night with my fish, uh, mushrooms and onions and healthy stuff. But, uh, but, but you know, uh, they just, they, they all they had was leeks and onions. They didn't have grapes. They didn't have, uh, you know, I like kiwi fruit and good fruit as well. But you got to remember, uh, grapes also, of course, wine comes from grapes, right? The joy of the Spirit, we could talk about that. You got to leave that lemon face behind and get into the joy of the Spirit. Um, um, hey, not, not in the natural, but in the spiritual now. Come on, a Christmas cheer and all that. But it's true, when you've been through a desert, you get happy over things that other people don't get happy about. You know, when you've been without some things, it's like a, a kid, you know, uh, maybe in, in, in some country, in a third world country, you know, receiving something that, that a child in a Western country would discard and they receive it and they get so happy about it. And these 12 came back and they said basically, yeah, God was right. The land is good, it's tremendous, it's fantastic, it's amazing. And then the congregation said, well, are we going in? Are we going to go back there? And, and, and 10 of them said, no, we're not going. Why aren't we going there? Because there's trouble over there. There's trouble over there. You know, well, friend, I tell you, 2021 could be some trouble lies ahead. But are we going to cross over? Are we going to pursue? You know, we've had challenges in the past. We had challenges this year. But, and I guess there could even be more challenges. But, but, you know, sometimes, listen, sometimes a blessing is in the battle. Did you hear just what I said? Sometimes the blessing can be in the battle. The blessing sometimes can be in the midst of trouble. The blessing can be in the midst of challenges, in the midst of even giants. You've got to step up, hallelujah. You've got to get above and not beneath. You've got to step into. So if you're afraid, guess what's going to happen? If you're full of fear, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to enter in. You're going to turn back in the day of battle. But it's true that God is no respecter of people. And whatever was written in the earlier days in the Old Testament was written for us because these things happen to them, the Bible tells us, as an example. Because listen now, listen now, listen now. Here's a key. You want a key for 2021? What you don't defeat will defeat you. What you don't defeat will defeat you. You'll be overcome it by what you don't overcome will overcome you. And maybe, you know, if you hadn't had a taste, have you had a glimpse? Have you had a taste? I know that sometimes we'd be scared off if we hadn't have had that taste. But you know, during that time in worship, maybe at a conference at Global, maybe just on a Sunday or maybe in your Word, I've had so many times, be it on the beach or walking in the bush or times when I've been away with God, 
And you know those moments, those moments where God just touches your life and you get a taste. Maybe you get a dream. You know, maybe it's through the preaching of the Word. I hope and pray that you get inspired today. But you get a glimpse of what might be. And these 10 spies, you know, they came back telling the people how big the giants were. But can I encourage you today? Your God, (laughs) your God is bigger. My God is bigger than any giant. Praise the Lord. Bigger than any devil. God is a creator of heaven and earth. Amen. He's infinite. The devil's finite. And so you're bigger, uh, you know, than any devil because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can I encourage you also, your God is bigger than your past. I know so many people get hang up on their past. It's amazing how some people are still hung up over something that happened to them when they're eight years old. God is bigger than your past. God is bigger than any rumour. God is bigger than any lie. We need to remind ourselves constantly how big our God is. Look up to the heavens, praise the Lord. Take a moment and consider the heavens, consider the galaxies, consider you know how fearfully and wonderfully you are made. And in the light of that, often our problems <laughs> disappear. Our challenges begin to shrink. Hallelujah. Because God is bigger than any problem. God is bigger than COVID-19. Can I just say that? God is bigger. Isn't it true when you're flying over a city? And I've had the pleasure and the privilege of flying over many cities. Some cities, large cities can look so small. But when you're stuck on the motorway, they're so big, you know. We always need to get above our problems, right? Soar with God like an eagle. Look down on them. You won't beat them by looking up at them. Hallelujah, you got to get above. Like the angel said to John, come up here and I will show you. Put it under your feet. That's why the Bible says that we've been raised up with Christ in heavenly places, far above all powers and principalities, seated in heavenly places. All the promises of God. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. And so understand the promise of God. If God be for you, who can be against you? And so we read when they came to this valley, they carried the cluster of grapes, two men on a pole. And then it says in verse 33, and we saw the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight, in our own eyes. It started with them in our own sight. And so we became in their sight. Now, it is those giants, I understand, challenges that separate the takers from the tasters. Did you just hear what I said? It's the problems and the challenges that separate the takers from the tasters, the takers and the dreamers. Let's, 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 let's look at this. Here's a biology lesson for you today. I want to give you a couple of illustrations about grasshoppers. Now, you may know about it. You may have heard about it. I've mentioned it in the past. But grasshoppers are basically a plague, a plague. And as I said, God said, I will make up unto you the years the locust has eaten. But number one about grasshoppers, grasshoppers have very strong leg muscles. Why do they have strong leg muscles? In order to leap away from the predators. They don't have strong arm muscles to fight with, but they can leap 20 times their own body size. But they can't take what they want. They survive by leaping away. They survive by backing away. They cannot confront which comes against them. My Bible tells me that having done everything, you and I are to stand. You and I are to stand. Make up your mind, my friend, that you ain't running anymore. Make up your mind that you ain't no grasshopper. Make up your mind that you're not going to quit anymore. Make up your mind there's no more hiding from me. I'm not going to leap away. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand and declare the Word of the Lord. Number two about grasshoppers. Grasshoppers come in three colours. I thought about bringing a couple of grasshoppers along today, but I couldn't find any. But grasshoppers come in three colours. They come in brown, so they can live on the ground. They come in green, so they can live on plants. And they come in the colour of sand, sandy, so they can live on the beach. In other words, my friend, they blend into the environment. They blend in so they cannot be seen. People who blend in never receive their promises. Obviously, they just are too laid back. They are too quiet. You've got to step out from the crowd. A little bit like Bartimaeus. You know the story, Bartimaeus. He stepped up, received a miracle. Peter, get out of the boat. You know, you've got to embrace change. We're facing 2021. 
You know, you've got to want the blessing. You've got to want all that God has got for you. I believe He's got great things for those who are called according to His purposes. You've got to want it so bad, you've got to step out. And, and, and you know, we talk about faith and risk. It takes risk, I know. Now, 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 now faith is an absolute risk, but there's an element of risk, the risk of, of failing, the risk of, of not going right, the risk of messing up, you know. But friend, hallelujah, step out. Caleb and Joshua, they basically said, if I, go by my, if I have to go by myself, I'm still going because I want to move on. I want to grow. I want to develop. I want to change. I want to embrace a journey. But when you see yourself as a grasshopper like these other 11, uh, 10 people did, then everybody else sees you as a grasshopper. They see you as a wimp. They see you as a beaten down person. They see you as a person who's never going to go anywhere or achieve anything in life. And so people will treat you as you treat yourself. I was talking the other day uh, about uh, mortgages and, you know, back in the day, you basically had to go to the bank with cap in hand and they were like the Lord of the manor and they had the power and they could, you know, say no and you, you didn't get your purchase. And of course, today it's a little bit like that, but not so much. Uh, there's a lot more competition out there today. And, uh, you know, the thing was, you always went to the bank well-dressed, well-presented if you wanted the mortgage, that is, and you'd present yourself very confident, just like an interview, right? Because people will treat you as you treat yourself. It's called dress to impress and all that. So number, number one, remember, grasshoppers survive by leaping away, not embracing the promises, but by leaping away. Grasshoppers blend in. Number three, grasshoppers climb on the stem of the vine, but they, never, they eat the leaves of the vine and they get very close to the fruit they get close to the promise. They even land on the, on, on the grapes. They even smell them. They even smell them. They even lick the moisture. They lick the moisture off the grapes. But they never get to eat the fruit. I'm not going to do that twice. Never get to eat of the promise. Why? Because grasshoppers don't eat grapes. Don't eat grapes. Maybe the devil tells you, you're, you're nothing. You're just a grasshopper. You maybe left school young, like me, 15, dropped out. Maybe your father died when you were young, or maybe your father left you. Maybe your marriage broke up, you know. And so the devil comes along and says, you're just a little grasshopper. You can get real close to the fruit. You can eat the leaves. You can land on the stem. You can lick the dew off the, off the grapes. But you're not going to partake of them. You're not going to partake. Amazing, you know, how people go through life and the hurts and the disappointments and the heartaches of the past are affecting what they're eating today. You know, you don't have to fight giants to be defeated. You just have to see yourself as a grasshopper. You'll defeat yourself. And so I know a lot of Christians, they shout about the promises, but are not eating the fruit. They're not eating the grapes. They're not partaking of the promises. You've got to make up your mind. <laughs> you ain't no grasshopper. You ain't no grasshopper. I know the devil whispers in your ear. I understand that. Tells you, hey, you ain't nothing but a grasshopper. I wish I could have a song about that. Maybe you got abused as a kid and you know a lot of tragic things happened today. No two ways about that. Maybe you got picked on at school. Bullying is a big thing today. Uh, maybe, you know, you got mistreated by your parents, you know. Maybe you had a problem, lust and all those kind of things. I mentioned in, uh, in the Bible, God worked with imperfect people. And maybe the devil comes along and says, hey, remember, it didn't work out last time. Remember when you got hurt. You know. Do you listen to the devil or do you listen to God? Do you listen to this Word? Do you listen to the Word of God, the promises of God? That What does God say about you? God says that you are chosen people, you're a royal nation, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, a royal priesthood, amen. You know, grasshoppers, they come so close, come so close. As I said, they land on the grapes, they smell it. They, they wet their lips on the dew, but they never partake of the promise. I just want to encourage you in 2021, as we enter this year, make up your mind, you ain't no grasshopper. City Impact Church, Bill Cluther, Invercargill, Queenstown, hey, out the east and west of Mount Wallen, on the North Shore here. Make up your mind. You ain't no grant. Determine in your spirit that you're not going to jump away. You're gonna, not going to jump away. You're going to embrace the journey. You're, you're no longer going to just blend in. 
You're going to stand out. Hallelujah. You're not going to lay down dead. You're not going to run for it, but you're going to grow. You're going to develop. You're going to change. You're going to get bigger. Every year we get bigger. We grow. We mature into the full measure and the statue of Christ. We don't arrive while we're alive. We're all on a journey, right? But decide you're going to go for it. I mean, why, my friend, why settle for the leaves when you can have the cluster? Why settle for the dew? Just a lick of the dew when you can eat the whole bunch. Why would you want to? Mm, these are good. You want some? I know you do. Oh. I mean, why would you not want to eat the fruit of the land? Why would you settle for the cluster when he wants to give you the whole field? Your promised blessing. I'm promised blessing. I've had blessings in my life. I've walked with God in quite a while now. And I've seen the blessing. I've seen what it's like to sometimes see myself as a grasshopper. I can't do it. Who am I to pastor a church this big? I mean, I, I've seen myself at times like this and being overcome or being defeated. But I've had to make up my mind. I'm no grasshopper. I'm a child of God. I'm called to eat of the promises of God. I'm called to eat the fruit of the land. Amen. And the fruit of the Spirit. And so I've been promised blessing. You've been promised blessing. And so 2020, I know, is pretty tough for some people. 2021, maybe tougher again. I don't know what the world's coming to. All I know is the end of the book. Hallelujah. And I know Jesus is coming back. And I know the church will be built. And I know Christians overcome. I know the devil will be thrown into the lake of fire. I know. Hallelujah. The great judgment's coming and all that kind of stuff. I know the end of the book. And so I want to encourage you, don't be a grasshopper. Don't, don't just smell the, the promise and stand at a distance. No, enter in and eat of it. It's great to clap and sing. I understand that. But let's step out. Let's step into and let's step up into the blessing of God. Let's possess all that God has promised for us. You know, I just love God. I love His Word. I love His promises. I've partaken of so many of the promises of God. I've had taste. I've had tastes of the promises of God. Some are yet to be fulfilled, but I'm believing God. And I thank God for every word because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So can I just encourage you to make up your mind not to be a grasshopper, but let's eat the fruit in 2021. You know, when I think about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Why would you not want to eat of that fruit? Why eat of the fruit of the world? Lust and envy and bitterness and anger and resentment and all that. Why would you want to partake of that? This is so much better. And so I want to encourage you, you know, get a taste of what might be. I hope and pray you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful New Year. I hope and pray that you enjoy the New Year season. If you're going away on holiday, have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. I'm looking forward to coming back and, and sharing with you. And I'll be sharing a couple of messages throughout January as well. And, uh, you, know, and you know, we're going to be back together in 2021, pressing on into the promises of God. Jesus is coming back and he's building his church. And he's asked you and I if we would be part of it, be a co-laborer with him. And so let's give it our best shot. You only get one shot at life, so why not live it well? And so God bless you and uh, love you all very much. And Bev and I just send you all our love and appreciate your prayers for us. And uh, I, I just pray for you guys as well. In Jesus' name, amen.